Thank you very much. Um, so yes, I, I come from, from the European Commission and I will give a European Commission perspective, so I will try not to be too boring. Uh, starting from the context and then what I or we believe the monitoring of media pluralism can do and what we believe it cannot do. Uh, so, starting from the context, I mean, uh, Mrs. McGuinness has already mentioned a number of issues that are very important. Uh, the issue of monetization, that is, you know, becoming ever more of a problem for media companies. Mm -hmm. uh, the precarious working conditions of journalists, uh, the political and commercial pressures that, you know, media outlets and media, and media professionals face. Uh, attacks to journalists and unfortunately it is like uh, everyday business for us to see uh, journalists being attacked and threatened uh, within the European Union and, be and beyond the European Union. Then we have censorship and self-censorship. We have the reaction to the global threats like terrorism and security claims that may have an impact also on media freedom and pluralism. And all this is to an extent reflected in the results uh, of the NPM that uh, Elda so skillfully uh, presented to us. Uh, then we have other issues that are also included in the NPM results, concentration of media ownership, transparency of media ownership, the independence of the regulators, which, as, uh, as we said previously, as Elda said previously, is not totally um, uh, presented uh, in the current form of the, of the monitoring. So in the, in the next results, we'll probably see uh, quite some quite some different uh, results with, with regards to that. So, given that this is the, the context that we are all aware of, what is the European Commission doing? Uh, well, Sarah and Beata both mentioned uh, our work on the uh, new proposal for the AVMSD uh, Audiovisual Media Services Directive, which was presented on the 25th of May and is now already subject of uh, negotiations here in the Parliament and in the Council, where we are pushing hard to reinforce uh, ex precisely the independence of the audiovisual regulators. Uh, now, this said, the legislative powers uh, of, the, of the Commission are limited. Uh, we can only act where, when there is uh, European legislation at stake. Now, this, in most of the cases that are presented to us in the form of uh, citizens' letter or parliamentary questions, this is not the case. So what do we do? We try to act when we can. For example, in the case of the uh, media law of Hungary of 2010-11, we managed to make uh, the law be fit in terms of, uh, or fitter in terms of uh, media freedom and pluralism. So when there is uh, no uh, legislative powers to act, what do we do? Well, for example, well, one piece of news that is quite recent is that uh, Vice President Timmermans is, uh, together with Commissioners uh, Ottinger and Jurova, is organizing a colloquium. Uh, as every year, there is this fundamental rights colloquium. This year will happen in November here in Brussels. And this year, it will be focused on media pluralism. So there is an open consultation ahead of the colloquium that will be open until mid-July, if I'm not mistaken. And I invite everybody here um, to, um, to respond to this public consultation and tell us their opinion, because then the results of the public consultation will feed into the debate of this very high-level colloquium. And then there is like a very good, uh, um, a very good action uh, that the parliament is taking to push us uh, to use EU, EU money to finance certain activities. Uh, for example, the European Center for Press and Media Freedom in Leipzig, not to be confused with the Center for Media, Pluralism, Media Freedom of Florence. Um, this is another thing, is a Leipzig-based uh, uh, center, uh, which uh, is financed by, by the EU through uh, a proposal of the parliament. Um, and it's, uh, it's active on, among other things, on uh, uh, providing with, um, legal support to journalists under threats. For example, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, they presented here in Brussels their uh, Syrian refugee journalist who is being hosted at their premises in Leipzig for a, for a period of time and where she can safely uh, work and present her um, perspective over what is happening in the Middle East. Then we are also financing another project run by Index on Censorship, uh, where they map uh, threats and attacks to uh, journalists across Europe. So there's, I don't know if this we, we can show it, but if not, I will just 
uh, picture it. It's a map of Europe with a number of dots uh, where you can see uh, the attacks to journalists and media professionals across Europe. If the dot is very big, it means that in a certain area there are a lot of uh, attacks. If we can show it anytime, then um, it will be great. Uh, and then we have a new project that is I, that that's the one that's the one. So you can see these are the numbers. So this means that over the last two years, uh, when we have been financing this action, there are there are hundreds of uh, threats uh, of attacks that have been to media professions that have been reported to to index on censorship and have been validated by uh, a professional team. So these are actually attacks that are sort of like it's. Um, we can we can consider them uh, rely, uh, very reliable information. So this is very scary. Uh, we are also uh, helping the um, with some financing the International uh, Press Institute uh, to focus their actions uh, on the issue of defamation, which uh, you probably consider it uh, very important and also uh, potentially uh, difficult for, for journalists. And then, of course, the European Commission and the European Parliament are financing the NPM, uh, which is an independent project uh, and shows risks to uh, media pluralism. This is something that I think we should stress. It's about risks. It's not about the actual state of the situation. Um, so now I start with what we cannot do, what, we, what the monitoring cannot do. It cannot replace action. It cannot replace action of the European Commission, of the European institutions, of the European Parliament. It cannot replace action especially of the member states. Uh, it cannot replace action by uh, media companies and by media professionals. But it can give, a very, it, it represents a very sound academic instrument pointing to the risks, again, the risks, not the actual situation. Um, and then the action is to be taken by us, by all the players involved, the member states, the commission, the parliament, the companies, again, also the single media professionals and the citizens. Um, so yeah, this is something that uh, the NPM cannot do. It cannot, it, it's not an action. It's, it informs the actions, but the action has to be taken. Um, what it can do, of course, uh, is to strengthen also, this is something that uh, we have mentioned because uh, Beata is uh, uh, part of this uh, team of people uh, in the different member states that are working on the NPM in their country and so these, we believe this strengthen, strengthen sorry, the, com the international community dealing with media freedom across Europe uh, and, and the exchange of best practices become a reality also through that. So if you have, if you have teams in 30 European member states working on that and cooperating and talking to each other, I think this is already a huge, a huge added value. Um, also, it uh, reinforces the interinstitutional links because the mere fact that I'm here and that we're working together with the parliament on this is also thanks to uh, this work and, and the initiative of the parliament, of course. So it also sh shows attention and concern sometimes from the institutions on issues that uh, shall, not, uh, shall not be forgotten and on people across Europe in all the, even the most remote areas that shall not be left behind. So we believe that monitoring media pluralism today means giving attention to the issues, uh, providing a credible analysis, uh, creating a strengthening a community of experts, and offering transparency also to the citizen. And indeed, as Mrs. McGuinness previously said, reinforcing the, the best practices in this, in this field. But then the action is up for us. Uh, everyone here, not just the, of course, the academia gives, uh, um, informs the action, but the action has to be um, for us to take, for us, meaning commission, parliament, member states, I stress that. Um, and again, we believe that this is very well invested money, very well invested uh, taxpayers' money. Um, so thank you very much to the Center of, of Media Pluralism, Media Freedom in Florence, and also to the colleagues that are actually there. Um, it's uh, an instrument that we believe is extremely useful on the stability of the instrument. I mean, for now, what we have is this sort uh, form of financing. So it will be for the Parliament, for the Commission to study possible new forms of financing, but for now, this is what we have. It's already quite a lot, and it has already run for a, for a number of years, and it it is likely to run for more uh, for more years. So it's already a good a good start. Um, and so thank thanks also to the Parliament who has actually made this possible, and uh, also thanks for inviting me here. <laughs>